Okay, welcome to our matrices topic. We're actually going to do a little bit of a proof just now. So we're going to introduce the general rotation matrix for transformations around the origin. Uh, and I just wanted to show if you're interested in knowing why it is, then here's your opportunity. So you don't have to uh, prove this. You can just learn to use the formula. Uh, but if you're like me and you like to know where formulas come from, then join with me in this little explanation. So what we're talking about here is point A on a Cartesian graph has the coordinate points X, Y. Effectively, we can measure that a bit like in polar form. We could say it's got some uh, distance R from the origin, uh, which would be its modulus, and the uh, we've got effectively the angle here um, is some alpha radians from the positive direction of the x-axis. We still call that zero degrees there. Um, if we think about then a transformation through theta radians, effectively then it's moved in an anti-clockwise direction. And the, the difference is actually moved by theta radians. So we can say that its angle from the x-axis is effectively theta plus alpha okay, radians or degrees, it works in degrees as well. So what we want to think about is the, the fact that at point A, we can say that R, so the X coordinate um, is equal to, so we'll imagine it as the horizontal and vertical uh, components. So the X coordinate is the horizontal part and according to, because the angle is alpha, there we could say that x is the same as r times the cos of alpha, whatever angle that is, using a bit of basic right angle trigonometry. And the y coordinate up here, because that's the sine ratio, is going to be r times the sine of alpha. We can also say that at point b, then the x coordinate, which I'm going to call x dash, the image of x is going to be, so we've got our still value r, it's still the same distance, but the angle is now theta plus alpha. So the horizontal part will be r times the cos of theta plus alpha. And my image point y is going to be r multiplied by the sine of theta plus alpha alpha. Okay, does that make sense? Uh, I'm going to call uh, this, just uh, going to refer to it later, I'm going to call that equation 1 and we'll call that equation 2 because we will be referring to it. So what we want to do is to introduce um, a transformation matrix. Let M be the matrix with elements A, B, C and D such that we can say that the image point x dash y dash is equal to the original points x, y multiplied by effectively m. That's what we've been looking at in the uh, previous example. We're trying to find a matrix. If you multiply the original points, it gives you the image points. So if that's the case, we can say that we know that m is a, b, c, d. Okay, so if we, uh, let's just write that out again, A, B, C, D, multiplied by X, Y. So what we can say here is that the image point X, if we multiply those brackets out, is going to be AX plus BY. And we can also say that Y if we, we sorry, if we, we could say, yeah, let's, okay, um, let's just make this one uh, matrix just now, sorry. We could say that, uh, well, let's write this as x dash y dash, the matrix is equal to ax plus by. On the second row, we're going to have cx plus d times y. Or we could split them up, that's what I was kind of half doing already there. We could say that an equation to generate the image point of AX would just be A times X plus B times Y. And similarly, Y, D 
dash is equal to cx plus dy. Okay, I'm going to call these equations 3 and 4. So, what we want to do is to be able to compare equation 1 and equation 3 because they both represent an expression for x dash. So compare 1 and 3. What we can say is that here the r cos theta plus alpha has got to be equal then to ax plus by. They have to represent the same quantity. So we can say that x dash is equal to ax plus by, which is also equal to an equation, 1 r cos. I'm going to write them down uh, the other way for just now because it technically was the first one, but it doesn't really matter. Okay? So if that's the case, then what we can do is we can say that ax plus by is equal to, well, we know an expansion for cos of alpha plus theta. Um, it's the uh, addition formula. So we've got r times cos alpha cos theta. And it's minus with cos, when it's an addition here, it's a subtraction that you have to put in here. So it becomes sine alpha sine theta. Okay, now similarly, uh, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to introduce back up here. Uh, I defined a value for, uh, or not a value, an expression for x and y. So I'm going to substitute them in for x and y. So let's say we've got a multiplied by r cos theta, cos alpha rather, plus b multiplied by, what was y, r sine alpha is equal to this whole thing here, r times cos alpha cos theta minus sine alpha sine theta. Okay, so what we're doing here, this is, uh, we're going to divide through by r. Okay, so we divide both sides by r. Effectively, all these r terms cancel out. And that's going to leave me uh, with the expression a cos alpha plus b sine alpha equals cos alpha cos theta minus sine alpha sine theta. Okay, what you can see here is there are matching terms on both sides. You notice that there's a cos alpha, which is multiplied by A, and on the right-hand side, there's a cos alpha multiplied by cos theta. On the left-hand side, we've got a B term multiplying sine alpha, and we've also got a sine alpha term on the right-hand side. Okay, in other words, what we can really say here is that in order for there to be a balanced equation, uh, the multiplier of, of cos alpha, which is positive A, has to be the same as the multiplier of cos alpha on the right-hand side, which is cos theta. So we can say that A must be equal to cos theta. Similarly, we can say that the multiplier of the sine alpha term on the left, which is positive B, has to be the same as the multiplier on the right hand side which is negative 1 times sine theta. In, uh, in other words we can say that b has to have the value of negative sine theta. And remember that a and b are actually the, com the first two elements of our transformation matrix. Okay. Now what we can do here is to repeat the process with equations 2 and 4. We could say that we, we know that y dash, the image of y, is r sine alpha plus theta, but it's also equal to cx plus dy. Okay, so we can repeat the whole thing again. We can say, compare. Let's actually go back to using blue so that I can keep the colors. Um, Compare 2 and 4. So 
what we're saying here is that y dash we've said is cx plus dy and we've also said back up in number two that it's equal to r multiplied by sine alpha plus theta and if we do the same thing multiplying it out this time when we're expanding sine we get sine alpha cos theta plus cos alpha sine theta and if we substitute in x and y again as we did for r cos alpha and r sine alpha we get c multiplied by r cos alpha plus d multiplied by r sine alpha is equal to uh, we've still got r in here we're going to get rid of that in a moment but we've still got it equals r multiplied by sine alpha cos theta plus cos alpha sine theta we want to divide through again by r as we did so we end up with c times cos alpha plus d multiplied by sine alpha is equal to sine alpha multiplied by cos theta plus cos alpha multiplied by sine theta now again we'll, we want to do the comparing of the left and right hand sides there's our cos alpha and there's our cos alpha this time it's over here and um, we can compare the sine alpha and sine alpha so we want to look at our um, coefficients so we can see here that c is a multiplier of the cos alpha and over here the cos alpha the multiplier is sine theta so we can say that c is equal to sine theta in order for the left and right hand sides to be equal and if we compare the multipliers of sine alpha you can see that it's d is has to be the same as cos theta so what we can say in conclusion uh, that we can say that m our transformation matrix is equal to a b c d so that's cos theta is a b was negative sine theta c is sine theta and d is cos theta and that is the matrix associated this is really important to get it right with an anti-clockwise rotation because we defined it as being going anti-clockwise around the the graph rotation another thing that's important um, around the origin that's all it is if it's around a different point we can't use this um, and it's angle whatever the angle is theta okay if your rotation is clockwise then you're going to have to use the negative of the angle so if you want to do a 30 degree rotation uh, clockwise you're going to have to use negative 30 as your angle uh, for each of these rather than positive 30 okay so hopefully that's the proof of it we're going to go on and, and use it in practice where we're just substituting into the formula you're never going to be asked in an, an exam uh, how to prove that but for some of you uh, you might be interested in that so hopefully that's been helpful